This is Crazy Cat on the uh, right there with the umbrella, about to get beamed in the head with a brick um, thrown by Ignatz the Mouse. Um, this began as a small strip at the bottom of a newspaper strip Harriman drew called The Family Upstairs, about an urban family trying to keep up with the Joneses upstairs. They were obsessed with these people who lived upstairs for them and were always wanting to um, imitate the type of normalcy that they saw that family upstairs getting into. Um, Harriman got a little bored drawing the strip, and so he started using the last inch and a half of every page to draw a classic reversal of mouse and cat, in which um, the mouse torments the cat, and the cat is in love with the mouse. Thus, Ignat's mouse and Crazy Cat were born. They were popular enough to get their own strip in 1913, and they continued to appear in the newspaper until 1944, at, um, when Harriman died, which was a very unusual arrangement at the time. Most um, cartoonists' work were not owned by the cartoonist, but by the publisher. Um, and the publisher would simply cancel the original artist's contract at a moment's notice and bring in a new artist because they owned all of that intellectual property. Um, William Randolph Hearst, who owned Crazy Cat, gave um, Harriman remarkable artistic freedom and um, told people, gave Harriman a lifetime contract, and on Harriman's death did not continue the cartoon strip. Um, this is very unusual in part because Crazy Cat was a pretty unpopular comic. Um, the only people who were really crazy about Crazy Cat were E.E. E. Cummings, a couple of the other intellectual elite of the 20s, and French Dadaists. These are the people who loved Crazy Cat. Nobody else really cared for him at all. Um, there were several adaptations. Other artists came in and drew film versions of Crazy Cat, and there was at one time a jazz ballet based on Crazy Cat that came, was produced in 1923. Um, this is the essence of Crazy Cat right here. Ignatz the Mouse hits Crazy Cat with a brick. Officer Pup, here falling out of the trees, tries to stop Ignatz the Mouse. Harriman drew this exact plot line for th almost 30 years, every single day. Um, during one brief period when his contracts got messed up, he had to draw two separate Crazy Cat cartoons to go with, for two separate publications. So it was a daily? Yes, it was a daily. Um, and it was mostly published in black and white. He was given license to publish in color for about um, a ten year period just for the Sunday strips. Um, so with this, you can already see we've got a cat, a mouse, and a dog who have all taken on very different roles compared to what they usually have. The mouse hates the cat, the cat loves the mouse, and the dog is trying to protect the cat from the mouse. Um, now, this is Officer Pup, and many scholars have tried to say that Officer Pup is in love with Crazy Cat, and that's why Officer Pup is always trying to catch eight knots. As you can see here, though, Officer Pup is saying, Full is the day with the promise of bounty, and full am I with the spirit of law, justice, and civic pride. So sin beware, crime have care. I believe that um, there's much more evidence that Officer Pup represents kind of the status quo and keeping the moral order intact. Um, as such, his enemy is Ignatz the Mouse, the um, kind of rebel without a cause. Uh, Ignatz is solely motivated by a desire to beam Crazy Cat in the head with a brick. Um, and Ignatz frequently runs out on his wife and children in order to throw a brick at Crazy Cat's head. Um, hang on, I have to flip my page. Um, sometimes uh, Ignatz actually manages to fool Officer Pup into helping him beam Crazy Cat in the head with a brick here. You can see at the top, um, uh, Officer Pup catches Crazy or Ignatz with a brick and says, toss it over, like, get rid of it, right? And so Ignatz tosses it over the side of the roof, it goes down the drain pipe, and conveniently lands in the rain barrel where Crazy Cat is hiding, right? Um, sometimes Ignatz the Mouse does indeed end up in jail. Often, though, Crazy Cat, him or herself, will foil Ignatz's plan. Um, Crazy Cat is a very interesting character. 
in that um, Crazy Cat represents sort of a fool, a transcendence of the reality around him or her. Here you can see Ignatz picks up the brick, and when he goes to throw it at Crazy Cat's head, Crazy Cat is distracted by this beautiful little flower that is far more interesting to him or her than anything else going around, leans down to um, s smell the little buttercups, and thus Officer Pup gets beamed in the head with the brick. Um, Crazy's kind of drastic reinterpretation of reality runs throughout this strip. As you can see here, in the previous panel, Crazy Cat has called this top hat that um, Ignatz the mouse is holding. There is a brick underneath there, just to spoil the surprise. Um, <laughs> Crazy Cat calls the top hat a flower pot, and here he says, even if it was a hat, I'd still say it was a flower pot, and I can't bottom my mind about it. Right? There is a blatant rejection of other people's reality coming from Crazy Cat. Crazy Cat lives in his or her own little world. Um, and in that little world, every time Ignatz the Mouse throws that brick at Crazy Cat's head, it is a sign of how much Ignatz the Mouse loves Crazy Cat. Only according to Crazy, everyone else in the entire strip knows that Ignatz hates Crazy Cat. Right? So we get a lot of um, hearts when uh, Crazy Cat gets hit in the head with a brick. And here, uh, Crazy Cat often calls um, Ignatz Little Angel. Um, please note, Crazy Cat is not a masochist. He does not simply like being hit in the head with the bricks. Here we have Crazy Cat getting beaten up by a lightning storm. In the final panel, um, in the left-hand panel in the final row, Ignatz finally shows up and hits Crazy Cat in the head with a brick, and Crazy Cat still thinks it's the lightning storm, and so he cusses out the lightning storm, and he says, you're not going to get me, and then he goes back to waiting for Ignatz to show up to hit him with the brick. Also very interesting is the uh, gender ambiguity of our hero or heroine, Crazy Cat. Um, Crazy Cat is frequently pictured in the feminine, as you can see here, Crazy Cat has a white muffler and a white hat and some white skates and is skating into the scene. Um, now, some people argue that E.E. Um, e. Cummings, most notably, insists that Crazy Cat is female. Um, the Ignatz always refers to Crazy Cat as male. The narrator in the text frequently refers to Crazy Cat as male. Um, Crazy Cat dresses up as a woman. Crazy Cat also has some sort of female, typical female characteristics of 1918, which is when this strip was written. In the beginning, Crazy Cat is saying, oh, I can't read the very end of it. Saying, me, I'm such a plain cat. I got no figure, no face, no fortune, nor purse, poise, nor position. Oi. And yet, he's true to me. Why should I complain? And then we get the brick, and the little darling is in a nice heart-shaped word balloon there, right? Um, Harriman himself insisted that Crazy Cat did not have a gender. He insisted that Crazy Cat was a sprite and was beyond gender. He did, in a 1915 cartoon, um, have Crazy Cat contemplating uh, his or her future life, and Crazy Cat at the end says, I don't know if I should take a husband or a wife. And then Ignatz hits him in the head with a brick. <laughs> um, Harriman himself was no stranger to uh, ambiguous identity. This is a picture of George Harriman. He was born in 1880 to Creole parents in um, New Orleans. He and his family moved from New Orleans when he was quite young to Los Angeles. <coughs> Harriman's birth certificate lists him as colored, and his death certificate lists him as Caucasian. He passed his entire life once he got to, New to um, Las Vegas. Um, I'm sorry, Los Angeles. He was in Los Angeles. Um, he um, passed. Uh, he never took off that hat that he's wearing on his head, and many scholars have said that this is probably to hide um, the texture of his hair. Most of his fellow newspapermen believed that he was Greek, and they called him the Greek. Harriman was very quiet, he liked to box, and he never ever corrected anyone about calling him the Greek. He loved to box. He was a big boxer, apparently. Um, 
Now, some of this uh, shows up in his work a little bit. Here we have Crazy Cat coming out of the beauty salon after getting a haircut and a dye job, right? Crazy Cat has been dyed white here. Look at Ignatz's reaction. Ignatz does not recognize white Crazy Cat as black Crazy Cat and is able to fall in love with white Crazy Cat until Crazy Cat's um, actual identity is revealed. And Crazy Cat has this very nice line about, um, why should I change my name if I, just because I've changed my complexion? In this uh, episode, at the very top of the page here, um, Officer Pup has stuffed Ignatz into a, like a stovepipe or a chimney pipe, kicks him off the edge of a railing, lands in front of Crazy Cat, who is dreaming of his love, Ignatz the Mouse. Ignatz the Mouse comes out here on the bottom tier, and Crazy Cat says, Ah, a little Ethiopian mice, black like a month of midnights, phew-wee. And Ignatz says, Oh, yes, and smacks him in the head with a brick. <laughs> Crazy Cat will not accept this. Because this is not his love, Ignatz. This is some weird black mouse. And so he says, Oi, such a noive. I got great care who I associate with, you, you sunboy coffee cake. Kicks him into a puddle of water, and it's revealed that this is in fact his true love, Ignatz. Uh, Crazy Cat says, This will teach certain peoples to keep in their own social spheres. Fresh mog. I have no idea what fresh mog means. Um, He's, and then Ignatz hits him in the head with a brick again. This time, Crazy Cat realizes it's, it's Ignatz and is overwhelmed with joy and plays an accordion. Right? Um, I would like to draw your attention very briefly to this language that we're dealing with. Harriman um, had a mixture, an amalgamation of dialects that um, Crazy Cat in particular spoke with. And scholars haven't finished really figuring out where all of those languages come from. It's a, a big mess. <coughs> um, one of the things that I love about Crazy Cat is how much Crazy Cat comments on the form of comics themselves, which is something that I'm really interested in. In this particular example, we have a comic within a comic that is discussing what is going on here, right? Um, Ignatz is painting a picture of himself, adds the brick, adds Crazy Cat, throws the brick at Crazy Cat, and then Officer Pup responds by painting Ignatz in the jail cell. Um, one of the ways that Harriman really messed with the form of comics, you can tell in this strip right here, do you see the big white panels that are like offset and, and kind of not in a line with the other panels? This doesn't happen at this time in comics outside of Crazy Cat. This is very unique to Crazy Cat's work. Um, and in fact, the color change of those white panels where they have been laid on top of the background colored part, right, is extremely unusual and it kind of throws the reader off in some very interesting ways. Um, Harriman is also really famous for um, not respecting the diegetic space of the comic book world. Um, the diegetic space, basically, the idea is that when you move from panel to panel, in order to move your reader with you, the background information needs to stay the same, right? Unless your characters have changed location. Well, look at crazy, or look at Ignatz sitting on the brick up here in this top panel. First, he's sitting in front of a fence by a road and a tree. Then all of a sudden, he's by a different road with a very different tree and a mountain in the background. And then all of a sudden, he is next to the beauty salon. Ignatz has not moved. The background has changed around him. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about this particular um, panel is that, do you see in the second panel up here? Oh, I have a pointer thing. I forgot. Okay, that one right there? We've got this swoosh right here that has absolutely no reason for existence whatsoever. We also have these, like, curtain-looking things and he, Harriman has blacked out the bottom half of the panel. He does this sometimes, just randomly, like he changes the background, right? In this panel, all of a sudden, it's nighttime and the moon is out. Um, he does these things and no one can figure out why. It seems like he was mostly just amusing himself as he drew the same plot and the same characters for 30-some years. I also love the curtains here and the fence, which 
you know, which turns us into like voyeurs in this picture, peeking out of a window. But there's really no reason for that whatsoever that I can think of, other than it made it amused Harriman to do so. Um, so I have a conclusion here. Um, Crazy Cat persists in transcending the mundane reality and the contest of wills between Officer Pup and Ignatz the Mouse. Um, instead. The cat chooses joy over and over again. The cat chooses to believe that Ignatz loves him or her and will always be there to throw the brick. Similarly, Harriman ignored the uncaring public's reaction to his work and instead chose to take joy in the act of creation of Crazy Cat over and over and over again. <laughs>